Um, so Gen Africa started in 1995, formerly as um, Genesis Kenya Investment Management Limited. Um, the initial founding was actually, um, we, we had a company called Genesis Asset Managers based in the UK who were looking to invest in emerging markets. At that time, emerging markets were becoming the key thing and they were looking to set up an office in Africa to actually do research. Uh, interestingly enough, one would think they would probably look at South Africa as most fund managers, uh, international fund managers did. But because of uh, one of the key shareholders had an affinity for Kenya, they actually opted to set up an office in Kenya. So our initial setting up was really to conduct research for the group within the East African region, East um, and sort of um, towards the South around Zambia and the rest. Uh, but at the point at which they set up, um, there were only two fund managers in Kenya at that time, it was Barclays Investment Services and Standard Chartered, and then Loiter at that time were also going through a bit yes. of their issues. Skis at that time, Standard Chartered were actually closing down their business. So other than doing research, uh, we actually saw an opportunity in coming into the fund management uh, industry in Kenya as well, just to offer some competition. So that's basically how we were founded, so 20 years ago almost 21, uh, although we started operations um, in, in mainly in 1996 where systems were set up, uh, the team was actually hired. So in terms of um, the initial pioneers, um, I think Charles came in in June, was it June of 2016, uh, Patrick as well, uh, I joined in October. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Adendo. So the key team that actually founded the company has been with the company. I mean, 20 years down the line, we're literally part of furniture. Um, but it's, it's, it's been an interesting uh, prospect. So that's basically the story of how we started. The initial couple of years, obviously, because there were no regulations, was a little bit yes. tough um, in terms of growing funds under management. Uh, although even prior to the RBA guidelines, we were lucky. We did manage to, lend, to land a few major um, clients. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, the main clients we were investing for were actually international investors looking to tap into the East African equity market. Um, so started growing our assets slowly, um, gained traction. I think it took us about four years to actually break even in the initial days. And then all that changed in 2001 when the RBA regulations came into being. And generally, pension schemes now had to employ uh, pension scheme managers. So at that point, we had a good growth trajectory. I think for us, we probably grew to about 38 billion by 2010. So it was a steady growth. Mm -hmm. But post 2010, we actually had a phenomenal like, growth spurt, uh, partly because of some challenges in the system. Um, we did quite well. Um, 2010 was actually our watershed year. That's when we really, we almost doubled our assets under management. Uh, we haven't repeated, well, on average, I think we've grown quite well. I'd say we've probably compounded growth on assets under management of about 25% mm -hmm. historically. Which is, it has slowed obviously as the base has gotten. Well, to be honest, it's not been very easy for some of the newer players to actually break in. Um, I think you could probably say the top six would probably dominate 80% of the market. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, not that we're sitting on our laurels, obviously, you, you, you never want to underestimate competition coming in. But I think part of what has put us in strength is the track record that we've established in the market, mm -hmm. the breadth of experience that the team actually has uh, over the years, and the, the nature of our clientele, uh, which is quite strong as well. Um, so in terms of um, the key milestones, I'd say 20, as I mentioned, 2001 was a major one. Um, 2010 was a key one where we phenomenally grew the business, um, continued to expand the team. When we initially started, we were a team of around 10 we're now close to 28, and we anticipate in the next few years we'll probably expand the team further. Patrick will take it through the strategy, but there's a lot of, obviously with increased competition, uh, a lot of innovations that we were thinking about just to sort of position ourselves. I think one of the other key milestones that I'd say is um, in 2012, um, rather than just focusing on Kenya alone, we opted to go regional, so we already have established an office in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Um, and within three years, we're actually the second largest player there as well. Okay, from an investment perspective, it's actually been negative. Um, it, it's had a two, let me say two-edged, it's like a double-edged sword. Um, I think on the one hand, 
obviously it's affected um, stock market valuations. Uh, banking stocks have taken a beating. Um, and I think to some extent it's also creating a bit of a worry because we've seen foreign investors sort of pulling out. The problem is the contagion effect. Um, if we're arguing that banks are making too much profits, who's next? Is it going to be Safaricom? And again, remember the market is fairly limited in terms of um, proper investable. Even within the 60-something stocks listed at the Nervi Stock yeah, Exchange, yeah. if you filter down, yeah. it's actually 25 probably, yeah. where you can get this sufficient liquidity and sufficient volumes to support the kind of business that we actually run. So this is a two-pronged effect in terms of that. Um, so, but to some extent, it also creates an opportunity because we feel sometimes market looks at information, overreacts, and then that creates an opportunity for you as a fund manager. If you believe, having interviewed the banks and done your research properly, that the market has overcorrected, and in fact, the valuations at current levels may be looking quite attractive for certain stocks. So on that end, it's positive. Um, but the immediate impact was it did affect uh, equity valuations negatively. The second impact was positive in the sense that what we anticipated would happen, and it did, is we, we anticipated, given the fact that banks would therefore cut down on risky lending, um, the initial reaction would be if government is giving me, similar to what I'm supposed to lend a risky person at, I'm going to park my money in government securities. So we had positioned ourselves in the bond portfolio to actually lengthen our duration in anticipation that the rates would actually as rates come down, because there's an inverse relationship, so as rates come down, your bond portfolio actually performs quite well. And interestingly, um, when the banking regulations came through, I think our initial concern was how negative the impact would be. And by August, most portfolios were actually not looking very good. But all that turned around in September simply because of interest rates coming off quite significantly and the benefit. And then because you've got a higher allocation to bonds, you, you tend to do much better. I mean, the net effect is you're still positive. You're, the bigger portion of your portfolio recovers more than the smaller portion that's negatively affected. So it's been a bit of a double-edged um, um, impact in terms of investments. The key concern for us is going forward what the impact will be on the economy. Um, I think having interacted with quite a number of companies, there's this sense that is there a bit of a disconnect? There's, there's a sense that perhaps there's a bit of a slowdown because a lot of what has been driving economic growth has been um, the infrastructure investments that government has actually been undertaking, uh, property, agriculture to some extent. Um, but the worry now is, will this capping of interest rates actually affect private sector credit growth? Um, overwhelmingly, a lot of the reports we tend to read suggest that it will, and we've actually seen it slow down. If you compare the figures for last year relative to this year, a lot of the banks, with, with the banks we're getting mixed messages depending on who you talk to. Well, it'll be useful for government because one, you know, right now working with an unfunded scheme, you, you have to have people contribute and take responsibility for their retirement as well. So it'll help ease the burden um, on a non-funded uh, scheme right now that government has. It reduces their liability a little bit. Uh, it improves the savings rate for the country. Um, so again, this whole NSSF thing is a bit controversial. I, my personal view is the spirit behind it, I think, is actually commendable because if you look at the the number of Kenyans who actually save for retirement, it's actually quite small. Mm. The number of companies that actually have schemes, this will compel them mm. to, to actually set up schemes and, and save for the retirement of, of their members. Mm. Uh, again, if you look at Kenya's saving rate relative to the region, our savings to GDP is nowhere near where That's it needs true. to be for mm. Vision 2030. This will help propel it towards where it needs to be. Um, and then you generally, create a lot of, you know, within the savings, it, 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 you almost go back to what the Asian Tigers actually did. Part of the success that they actually had in the 60s that made them outpace us significantly is they actually mobilized local savings and pumped it into infrastructure. So I think you're going to see a lot of developments along those, those lines, public, uh, private partnerships, pension schemes probably being much more involved in infrastructure development. There's no reason why pension schemes can't fund airports, bridges, roads. Well, not a good year in terms of overall performance because obviously um, interest rates went up, uh, stock market was negative, so that does have an impact uh, on portfolios. But generally, um, I think overall, um, based on the AFCA survey, average schemes actually did 0.5% last year. Uh, we were 
thankfully above that for most of our clients.